Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order at seven o'clock. This meeting is being held in accordance with the public laws of 1975, chapter 231. An adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by a notice sent to the Star Ledger, the local source, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the township website. Uh, I ask those now to, uh, I now turn this over to David Penna, who will lead us of the American Legion, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. David, good evening, sir. Good evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Penna. You're welcome. I now ask, I now ask for a moment of silence for all those serving near and not so near. Thank you. Roll call, please. Here. Deputy Mayor Weber. Here. Committee Woman Du Bois. Here. Committee Min Huber. Here. Committee Min Kaiser. Present. I'm sorry, my, my internet went out for quite a moment there. Do we have, uh, did we have roll call? Yeah. Okay, th thank you. Uh, now turning over to proclamations and announcements. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, committee woman Du Bois who will uh, do our proclamations this evening. Erica. Hi, thank you, Mayor. Um, the first proclamation, I mean, it's actually a resolution I'm going to read is resolution 2020-176. The township committee of the township, I'm sorry, the township committee of the township of Springfield recognizes and proclaims the month of June 2020 as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer LGBTQ pride month throughout the township of Springfield. Whereas the Township of Springfield honors the history of LGBTQ liberation movement and to support the rights of all citizens to experience equality and freedom from discrimination. And whereas the rainbow flag is widely recognized as a symbol of pride, inclusion, and support for social movements that advocate for the LGBTQ people in society. And whereas all humans are born free and equal in dignity and rights, LGBTQ individuals have had a measurable impact on the cultural, civic, and economic success of our country. And whereas the Township of Springfield is committed to supporting visibility, dignity, and equality for the LGBTQ people in our diverse community. And whereas while society at large is increasingly supportive of LGBTQ equality, it is essential to acknowledge that the need for education and awareness remains vital to end discrimination and prejudice. And whereas this nation is founded on a principle that every, everyone has infinite dignity and worth, the Township of Springfield calls upon the people of this municipality to embrace this principle and work to eliminate prejudice everywhere it exists. And whereas celebrating Pride Month influences awareness and provides support and advocacy for the Township of Springfield's LGBTQ community, and is an opportunity to take action and engage in dialogue and to strengthen alliances, build acceptance and advance equal rights. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Township Committee of the Township of Springfield hereby proclaims the month of June 2020 as Pride Month in support of the LGBTQ community. Be it further resolved that the rainbow flag will be raised at Chisholm Community Center during the month of June, recognizing the LGBTQ residents whose influential and lasting contributions to our neighborhoods make the Township of Springfield a vibrant community in which to live, work, and visit. And the Recreation Department is a safe space for LGBTQ young people in our community. And I just wanted to add that last year, we did have our first Pride Month in Springfield and it was a, it was a big occasion because first, it was our first and it was the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. This year we planned, Adam worked really hard and Brendan worked really hard to put together a really great program that unfortunately the pandemic pushed along. So we couldn't do it the way we had hoped. We will be having a flag raising that will not be public right now this week, but then we will hopefully in October when other Pride Month events may be occurring across the country, be able to have it there if everything is going well in regards to COVID. 
So I want to thank Adam for all his hard work on that and Brendan for his hard work on that. And, I, and everybody who's supported this initiative since last year, thank everyone who's here today because it wouldn't happen without all of you. Thank uh, you. We also have a okay. resolution. Go ahead, uh, Commander Huber. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, but the flag, it can't go over the American flag. An American flag is half mass, so it's going to go under it. Am I correct? Can I go over it? No, obviously. Okay, I just want to make sure because I mean, I, I, you know, I think it, we, I don't know if, when we can raise the American flag up, but if we can raise it up, we can go right underneath it. That's all I'm saying. Gotcha. Right. Okay, good, good point. Thank you for bringing that up. And we're also going to have a resolution that um, designates this as uh, June as Pride Month a little later on in the meeting. Uh, Eric, do you want to do the second proclamation for us, please? Yes, we have one more proclamation this evening, and I'd like to apologize in advance because this is something that last year I should have done. I thought about doing possibly, but we never came to fruition. And I want to thank everybody on the committee and especially the mayor for doing this tonight. I think it's really impactful with everything going on in the world and following the timing is great considering the event we had last night in the township where over 400 people were there to honor the our black lives across the country, our, our black residents and just unity. So um, I wanna talk about, I wanna read a proclamation for Juneteenth. Whereas President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, declaring the slaves of Confederate territory free paving the way for the passing of the 13th Amendment, which formally abolished slavery in the United States of America. And whereas word of that signing of the Emancipation Proclamation was delayed some two and a half years to June 19, 1865 in reaching authorities and African-Americans in South and Southwestern United States. And whereas June 19th has a special meaning to African-Americans and is called Juneteenth, combining the words June and 19th, and has been celebrated by the African-American community for over 150 years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Christopher Capitis, mayor, on behalf of the Township Committee of Township of Springfield, County of New Jersey, do hereby acknowledge June 19th through 20th, 2020, as Juneteenth in the Township of Springfield, and urge all citizens to become more aware of the significance of this celebration in African-American history and in the heritage of our nation and township. Thank you, Erica. Um, there's several other announcements we have this evening. I ask you to bear with me. Uh, our Springfield Helping Spring, Spring, Springfield Helping Seniors program is still going on. Uh, this is emergency grocery shopping and pickup prescriptions. Call 973-912-2227, 973-912-2227, or email recreation at Springfield hyphen New Jersey dot us for any of our senior members who had need any grocery shopping or prescriptions pickup. Uh, our recreation department will absolutely help you out in, in getting those uh, safely to you, to your door. Um, as Erica alluded to uh, earlier, uh, we will be raising the pride flag tomorrow at 415 in front of the Chisholm center. Um, you know, we, we thank Erica and again, also, um, Adam for their uh, huge efforts in, in, in making this possible and, and their commitment to this uh, endeavor. Um, so that would be tomorrow uh, at 415 in front of Chisholm. Um, while we're on the subject of recreation, uh, we are excited to announce uh, that we're gonna be doing something a little different this summer. Uh, for the first time, we are going to have uh, three opportunities on July 8th, July 23rd and August 13th uh, to have our residents participate in a drive-in movie. Um, and while we're speaking in recreation, I would like to uh, turn this over to Adam, if you could just briefly describe uh, this opportunity for our residents uh, come this summer, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and everything that you just said and everything that I said is going to be uh, public uh, either later tonight or first thing tomorrow morning on the township website, on Facebook, uh, through email blast, and also on the Patriot website. So we're gonna be getting information out to, to let you all know that although summer is gonna be a little bit different in Springfield this year, we can provide uh, some, some family fun over at the pool parking lot. We're partnering with a great company. It's a local company called Boxcar. 
Boxcar is going to be able to sell you a movie ticket, uh, pre-order your food for the event, um, guide you to a parking space at the pool with a great view of a, of a jumbo screen, have your food delivered to your car door, um, and also send you email um, the, the rules and other announcements regarding our three movies um, as more information becomes available. So it's a great company to work with. They're, they're really high tech and they're going to make it a streamlined uh, summer for us. Um, tomorrow, when you get the announcement, all you have to do is go onto the unique website for Springfield via Boxcar, put in your information, and Boxcar will send you a link to register for the event as soon as the information becomes available. So we're narrowing down the movie right now. We're narrowing down the exact time. Um, we're doing a site plan for the lot to make it just a really easy, um, fun experience for everybody. So stay tuned until tomorrow for all that information, but please mark your calendar and join us at the pool this summer for that. Thank you very much, Adam. Job well done, and we'll certainly uh, get that information out there to you as soon as we can. Start promoting it, and uh, certainly additional details to follow. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, bulk pickup is going to be June seventeenth. Uh, just as a reminder to our residents, it's you know it's done uh, you know quarterly, and June seventeenth will be our next pickup. Also, I know I've been getting a lot of questions, and of course, with this quarantine, I know that a lot of you must be cleaning out your house and doing some spring cleaning a couple of months early, but I do want to let you know that we will be having our townwide garage sale uh, that Saturday, this Saturday, June 20th. Uh, so we're going to have the flyers and the announcements on our website and Facebook and all of our uh, media outlets, and we're also announcing it here uh, that we are going forward with bulk pickup on the 17th. And we're also going with our garage sale, uh, townwide garage sale, June 20th. Uh, we're asking you, obviously, to practice social distance, wear your mask. Um, but again, no permit needed. If you have any things that you'd like to put out for sale, uh, you can do so Saturday, June 20th. Um, I'm skipping around a little bit, and I apologize. But also another important coming date, date coming up is July 7th. Uh, July 7th was the new uh, primary date. Uh, for the state of New Jersey. Uh, there's obviously a new process and procedure, as you probably heard by now, it's almost completely all vote by mail. Uh, and just to give a little, a couple of broad strokes about what that looks like on July 7th, uh, I'm gonna ask our clerk just to give a, a, a quick overview from the county uh, about some uh, you know, process and procedures about how July 7th is gonna work. Madam Clerk, please. Thank you, Mayor. Well, Governor Murphy's Executive Order 40, 144 outlines the following for the July 7th primer. First of all, no sample ballots will be sent out. All active registered Democratic and Republican voters will automatically receive a vote by mail ballot with post prepaid. All unaffiliated voters and inactive voters will automatically receive an application for a vote by mail ballot with return postage prepaid. There will be a minimum of five secure ballot drop boxes located throughout the county for you to deposit your vote by mail ballot if you don't want to mail it in. These locations will be updated by June 15th. Uh, vote by mail ballots postmarked on or before election day, July 7th, will be as long as they are received by July 14th. So mail your ballot, say July 6th or 7th, and you take it to the post office and make sure it's postmarked. If prior to the 14th, it will be counted. Now, there will be a reduced number of polling locations available for Springfield voters. Um, I did put something on the website. It could change, but Springfield voters could go to the pool, Woodmere, or Walton. And again, it will be on the website. And <laughs> however, if you go to vote in person, you will be given a paper provisional ballot unless you are a voter with a disability who needs help. So if you are going to go and, and vote in person, you're given a paper ballot and it will be distance standing, social distancing. So that's about it for now. But anyone who has any questions can always call my office, 973-912-2201.
or they may call the Union County Board of Elections at 908 527 4123. Thank you. Uh, can I just say something, Chris? Sure. All right. um, we usually, because I know people are probably going to call town hall tomorrow, we usually have the garage sale the Saturday, right. the weekend before bulk pickup or the Saturday before, whatever it is. And now it's going to be after because people usually go out to the garage sale or they don't sell, they, they put in bulk, bulk pickup. I'm just saying, in case they start calling. You're right, committeeman. You're right, that is a good point. And I appreciate you bringing that up. But again, I thought it would be would be best to, uh, you know, obviously if they have items that they wish to do, to, to wish to uh, to have, that they, um, you know, in that way. I know that a lot of people are cleaning their house and, and if they have items, they would like to do it. But I do, I do get your point. But I, I, I wanna have the opportunity for, for people to do so. Um, I have two other announcements. Um, one is in regards to our high school seniors, and, and the, the last one is uh, in regards to the pool. Uh, first, for um, uh, our, our seniors, um, we know that there is going to be a virtual graduation ceremony planned for June 18th. Uh, I've been in communication on a regular basis with our superintendent, Mr. Davino. We've had, you know, several conversations over the pandemic, you know, uh, in regards to, uh, you know, uh, the executive orders based on both based both based both on the municipal and school side, um, and uh, he's having his virtual graduation at at one o'clock on June eighteenth. Uh, the township wants to participate. The township wants to give our salute uh, to the uh, to the graduating seniors on Senior Day. Uh, so we have re arranged for our first responders vehicles uh, to be in the parking lot at Jonathan Dayton High School. And somewhere between 12.55 and 1 o'clock before the beginning of our uh, virtual graduation, we will be flashing our lights and we will be activating our sirens as a form of congratulating, doing our part to congratulate uh, the class of 2020 from Jonathan Dayton High School. It is a small gesture. Uh, but is a gesture that we feel uh, indicates our 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 showing of support uh, for our graduating class as we wish them the best of luck. Uh, continuing on with our graduating class, uh, I have been uh, several parents of seniors have reached out to me as as have students, uh, not just to me but this to this township committee about the possibility of having some sort of event to support the graduating seniors. Um, I had spoken to two parents in particular who have been responsible for the graduation senior end of year activities. Uh, and uh, I spoke to them and I gave my full support to an activity after June and July, gave them my uh, full support for a July activity to uh, celebrate and commemorate the class of 2020. Um, I had said to them for sure it would have to follow the executive orders and I know they've changed today and they've been expanded. We'd have to have plans, um, you know, codified by our police department, our fire department, our health department. Uh, but I would be very interested in joining the parents of the senior class, uh, especially the coordinators, in planning some type of activity to commemorate their senior year in the months of July. Uh, and I have also reached out to uh, several members of our township committee in hopes that they would be in support of this endeavor. I think this is something that everybody wanted to do, um, but I, I certainly hope that um, if any of the other township committee feels that they wanna uh, say anything in terms of uh, the support of the senior class, they can take this opportunity to do so. But I thought it'd be a nice idea uh, to, to help them have some type of activity to commemorate the class of 2020 sometime in July. I just want to oh, Bad. Wait that, before jump. that uh, I'm absolutely on the same page as you, Mayor. I know I've been in contact with the senior, the, the parents that have been, or that would be organizing project graduation and all that. And we, we want to support them. We just, again, everything is so fluid. We couldn't, we can't make promises and commitments until we know what the rules are. And as the rules start to change, 
we are changing our perspective with those rules. So I, I agree with you 100%. They know that I'm on board to help in any way. I know you're on you're on board to help, that I'll help you in any way. So I'm glad to hear that. I'm really I'm really happy to hear that. I just like to say if we do something, which I agree with you 100%. I like to have it like at six o'clock or after, so people like myself who are working can get home and support it or whatever it is. If it can be done, if it can't, it can't. But I like it at six. I like to six. Sure. Right. I, I, I think we're all in agreement. Uh, uh, I, I echo uh, Commitment Huber, though. I, I think later is better than, say, in the afternoon. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Um, and, and that goes to our last point. I, I know that there, you know, in speaking with the expanded executive orders that Governor Murphy put out today, uh, the first people thing people are thinking about is the pool, and rightfully so. Um, we as an executive, we as the township committee have on our executive session this evening, uh, recreation department, uh, more specifically, and I, I can share it is about the pool. Uh, we, we want to take this opportunity to look at the executive orders and discuss the possibility of opening the pool, um, for, for the foreseeable future. Um, but again, we have, uh, being that this, uh, executive order just came out today, we as a township committee have not had the opportunity to speak on it, and uh, we're certainly going to uh, hammer out some details and, and, and things of that nature and, and look at all of the variables that go into possibly opening up the pool and uh, discuss that this evening in executive session to hopefully have an answer uh, sooner rather than later on, on the, the status of the pool uh, for the very near future. Um, that concludes my proclamations and announcements. Um, I would like to move on to uh, pu public comment on agenda items only. Uh, if anyone has a comment on the anything that's listed on the agenda, uh, please use the question and answer feature in the uh, box to state your concern. We're gonna ask that you uh, please state your name and address for the record. And uh, Ms. Donnelly, I'm, I'm just gonna ask you to keep the three minute time and give me a wave and, and jump in there and, and just you know kindly let me know when the three minutes have expired. Um, first up is, uh, Ms. Jones, Ms. Wendy Jones. Ms. Jones, are you there? I don't see her. She's not on the panel. I think she just unmuted. Okay, I unmuted a third time. Okay, this time it went through. All right, um, I first want to thank you all for your participation in the vigil yesterday. That was very um, heartwarming and helpful. Uh, and um, I wasn't sure where this was going to go because I looked at it and it wasn't clear, so I'll do it now. Um, I understand that that everyone has taken a hit because of COVID. Everyone's budget is in arrears. Uh, every state, every county, every every town. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Jones. What yeah. what agenda item are you specifically referencing? Uh, the the budget. Now it doesn't look like there was public comment. It looked like you were discussing it among yourselves. Am I wrong? The budget. No, there's going to be a presentation tonight. Okay. Is there going to be discussion? Uh, there's going to be discussion uh, amongst ourselves. Yes. But no public comment. Oh, absolutely public comment. You can do it right now. It's an item on the agenda. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. So I understand that um, that everyone has taken a hit with the budget uh, and that the library gets a base amount and then uh, the normally the, the town will put more on top of that and that um, there was not able to do it this year. I'm I'm asking you to to restore some of the the, the money that's been taken away because um, the library is specifically important to Springfield as a town and also uh, to democracy. Um, the the organizations that you have, a lot of them started in the library, like the Springfield Garden Club that was 25 years uh, enriching the the beautiful uh, township uh, plantings um, that started in the library. Our political group, CACP, that uh, helped get that ordinance passed uh, with the help of the residents, uh, that started in the library. Um, the uh, literature volunteers that, that help people learn how to read and write, uh, that's 
that's done in the library. They have special reading groups for people with special needs. Uh, so it's not just books and movies and and you know ebooks and stuff. It's a whole nexus of intellectual activity. The, the library and the public school system, that's what democracy is. So if you can possibly restore some part of the funds that were taken away, that would be helpful so that the library didn't have to cut so many things that are essential to our democracy and to our town. That's it. Thank you very much, Ms. Jones. I appreciate your comments. Um, okay, and next we have Mr. Sayuda. Hello, this is Dominic Sayuda. How are you? Hi, Chris. Good. How are you? What's your address, please, for the record? Dominic Sayuda, 97 Colfax Road. Good evening, sir. Hi. Yeah, I have three questions. Uh, I'm glad that the uh, the township is entertaining the idea of opening the pool. Uh, last month at the town meeting, I listened to it. They, uh, the town the town's opinion was very adamant because of COVID-19 to shut the pool down completely for the entire season. There were uh, opinions echoed that uh, the, t the pool should stay closed the entire season. With Governor Murphy's uh, recent um, allowance of allowing the pools open and now the township is considering a 180 on their decision to open the pool a lot of uh, over the last month a lot of springfielders have have uh, joined other town pools in one of your variables to open the pool i am asking are you going to take into consideration people that have springfielders that have joined other pools are they going to be allowed to attend the pool for free without paying because they were forced to make a decision for their families, uh, recreation and leisure needs to join other pools in this month span that has gone on. Second question is, why is there no pool cover for the pool? There's been a two, there's been a million dollar upgrade with the pool over the last five years. It's sort of akin to leaving your bike out in the rain for two weeks. I have pictures of the pool. It's totally green as soot with uh, geese doing their business in it. Uh, that's, corros that's corroding the uh, pool liner, and it's going to cost the township a lot more money in the future to replace that pool liner. Uh, I do have businesses I could give the town to buy a pool liner for that pool. Not a pool liner, but a pool cover for that pool. So that's my second question. And the third question is, on Lyons Avenue, on, I'm sorry, the Lyons building on Morris Avenue, uh, there was a lot of debris uh, uh, floating onto Morris Avenue. Uh, I believe these are carcinogens that are causing that are that that have a, that have a health impact on the community. What is being done to curtail or mitigate that big hole in the Lions Building, as there has been no activity there for the last two weeks, um, or or the last I'm sorry, the last uh, two months. I'm sorry. Uh, please. Uh, answer these questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for your comment. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, as far as the pool goes, um, you know, we're, we're listening to comments tonight so we can go into uh, our discussion this evening as most informed as possible. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have our BA, uh, Mr. Basicolo, get back to you uh, with specific answers to your third question, because um, I'm not exactly sure at that time it was not a uh, a uh, uh, an agenda item. So uh, I want to leave room for people that have uh, agenda item questions to be able to ask them, but I will circle back to you along with Mr. Basicolo at a later date. And I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Ms. Jonas. Hi. Hi, how are you? How are you? Okay, guys. Um, I know a lot of you from Springfield. I'm the uh, chief operating officer at the Y and Union and um, have very similar situations as you guys with camp and daycare and the pool. Um, we are going to open the pool and uh, it's an indoor pool. It's a little bit more challenging. I feel that you actually can open the pool safely and I know it's probably better for the pool. You have to clean it out anyway. It's not like it could stay looking like that for the season. I do believe that 
you may be able to uh, get away with charging a, a little COVID fee, an extra fee, if that could be discussed. People could bring their own chairs. I think they should. People should wear masks when they go to the uh, men or ladies room, when they go for a snack, when they check in. And I think you could open the pool a little bit earlier if you're not having camp to expand the hours so that people get spread out more. Um, it's There's a lot of grant money out there to get PPE if you need it. Um, I just think that it's gonna be a shame for the kids in this town, for the families to have to go elsewhere. Um, when other people, uh, other pools can open, we should be no different than the other pools. I will be glad to help you in any way with things that I'm going through, if it would be of any help. Even if you opened a little bit later, June 29th, even if you opened the weekend of July 4th, whatever you could give the people, I think would really be appreciated. And I think that as this COVID thing marches on. It's a shame. We just are learning so, so, so late, so much. Um, it would probably be really, really, really a shame if we didn't open and, and things got better. Um, I know that they also could, could get worse, but I think if everybody has to be responsible and diligent and that wouldn't happen. Also, one more thing, children should not be dropped off because that, that could be bad. You'd have to have some very strict rules that they have to be accompanied by an adult up to a certain age. That's all, I just hope you guys can work it out to open because I think it would just be a better thing for the town. I'm done, thank, thank you. Thank you. you, what was your address for the record, please? 22 Skylark Road. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. I wanted to get you right to your point. Um, seeing no further public comment, I'm going to close the public comment portion of the meeting. Um, what I would like to do at this time, uh, just to let you know, I know that there was a one person who said that there was, uh, some discoloration in the pool. Fact of the matter is we had a filter malfunction. Uh, once we get that up and running again, um, that color should go away and please rest assured if and when we do open up the pool uh there'll be enough chlorine in there to uh maintain a self and safe and healthy level uh right now it, there's a minimal amount of uh in there just to treat the water um now let us move Mayor, on to report. one more member of the public who just put their name in i don't know if you want to it was like sure. Right as you uh, yeah. sure um okay uh jerry Let's go to Jerry. Hey, how are you? Jerry Fernandez, 393 Hillside Ave. <clears throat> I know opening the pool, that you that's a tough decision, and, and I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot to talk about as far as setting it up. I don't think the public uh, – well, I, I shouldn't say that. I guess they do realize that, you know, staffing it and, and, and everything it takes to run it is it, difficult to just put on a switch and go. But one thing that I thought about, the food, if you do decide to open, obviously the vendors, I don't know if you're going to be able to get a vendor that you had last year to be able to go right in and, and do everything. But maybe, you know, we, I know we've had in town in some areas these food trucks, like uh, Cousins Maine Lobster was in Milburn, and uh, a couple of these like specialty food trucks that maybe we can put in the parking lot, two or three there, to give people, even if the pool doesn't open, you know, some options to, to try some of these different food trucks. If the pool does open, you could have them out there for people to get food and refreshments out there, maybe work with some of them. Just throwing it out there. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I am in agreement with you. I, I think we should uh, make food a, certainly a, a topic of conversation as we look to, to reopen. Um, I know for the box car that we're looking to uh, do like we do at the Thursday nights downtown to support local businesses and have maybe the local businesses direct uh, uh, deliver it directly to the cars. And if perchance we can't get uh, a vendor to come in and uh, supply the food, maybe perhaps we can encourage um, all of our local businesses to leave menus uh, and drum up support um, you know, that way to support our local businesses who are really in need right now. And, and I know that they could, they could really use the business. And I don't think there's a, a better idea than, than Springfield residents supporting local Springfield businesses. But I do, I, I do concur with your idea about the food for sure. Um, moving on, I'm going to check one more time to see if there's any comments from the public. Um, 
Seeing none, I'm going to move on to our reports, and I'm going to go for the administrator report. Mr. Basicolo, good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Just a couple of quick things I want to bring everybody up to speed on. On the Larkin building, uh, Charlie's making good progress, actually. Within the next two weeks, he's planning on having steel delivered. Uh, then the trusses are going to go up. Six to eight weeks for framing after that. Three months to finish that part of it. He's planning on being open and having it fully rented by next April. So that's his game plan right now. Uh, update on Gomes building, actually. We got some good news. Uh, they came in. All the paperwork has been done for the demolition of the two small houses that are still on the property. And that should be in, in a day or so. Once we get the written asbestos report, then he'll be able to take those two buildings down. Gomes also is gonna has the plans for the footing and the foundation for the new building. They'll be submitting those for review at the end of the week. So we should have that in for our engineering department to start reviewing, making sure everything is done according to the rules. Um, SACs, we're still waiting for them to go before the Milburn Planning Board, our Board of Adjustments, and that looks like July at this point. I want to bring in Mr. Betcher a second to just make a comment. We had a meeting on our I and I with the company that's going to be doing that for us, setting all the meters. They're going to provide us with a map for the next meeting. We'll have a uh, PowerPoint presentation showing where all of the meters are installed, where the next phase would be. They've mapped out all of the lines and everything for us. So, Mr. Betcher, you you have any further comments on that? Mr. Betcher, you just muted yourself. Maybe he has no comment. Okay. No, I have a comment. Are we there? Yep, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, again, just bringing everybody up to date um, on our I&I &I investigation that stalled during COVID-19. Uh, as John mentioned, we just completed setting 60 meters that covers one third of the sewer system in the township. So these eye trackers will be monitored over the next 90 days and hopefully provide us information as to any areas of inflow into the system causing us to exceed our daily flow rights. So this is the first stage of a uh, three-stage project study that will eventually cover the entire source system. Uh, so importantly, with the cooperation of the weather through these meters, uh, we hope to either slowly rule out sections of pipe or locate problems. So again, as John mentioned, uh, We'll be, we're, we're actually up and running and understand this is a slow study process and we'll be updating you as we move forward. Hey, Mr. Betcher, do you want to mention also, we were out the other day looking at roads, what we're going to attempt to pave this year. You want to kind of bring that up, Robbie, and touch on some of the items that we looked at? Um, yeah, I didn't bring... I don't have the list with me, but we do have uh, we do have the road program uh, that we're going to be upgrading several roads. We do have the roadside assistance program. That's through that's through the DPW, where we are going to be doing seven streets. Uh, that's London Terrace, Gregory Road, Lions Place. Uh, you have to excuse me. I have so much going on. I, I just forget the other roads, but I could update everybody with a list uh, in the very near there? future. Yeah, next meeting, we'll do an update on that. Yeah, I mean, the next uh, meeting, I could lay out the whole road plan, but, but we do have a lot going on. We have, uh, through DPW, we have seven roads. Um, and through the engineering road uh, program, we do have several streets and we have a community development grant. So this was all something I, I didn't have uh, with me at the house. And for me to remember all that is just not at the forefront of my mind. So I apologize for that. Yeah, but we'll come uh, to the next meeting. Yeah, but at the next meeting, I can bring everybody up to date on all the streets that we're going to be doing. Okay. Other than that, Mr. Mayor, I think that was the main things that we had going this past couple of weeks. Mr. Mayor, you're muted. 
Thank you, sir. Um, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Basicolo? No, I, I do want to add though that um, we, we've been talking. We're uh, finishing up Ruby Field very soon. So when uh, everybody's ready to play baseball again, they'll be ready to play on the field. That's awesome. Got, you know, talking about baseball, I got a call from a baseball league. Um, I know they want to start in the next two weeks, they want to start playing baseball because other towns have gotten in touch with them. So we have this, I don't know what regulations it is, I don't know what we have to do, but uh, Mr. Betcher, if you can just check that and see what we have to do, no idea. From what I understand, the governor has, has not really come out and given us the guidelines on baseball at this point. Well, it's supposed to be June 22nd. I know the league we're in is getting ready for that, but I haven't seen guidelines. Yeah, until we get them, I, I really don't think we can go any further. Agree. Anyone else? Um, it's not that I, I'm receiving texts from uh, from residents that they're having trouble getting into the meeting. So I don't know if there's any advice. We I don't I'm not I don't know what to how to advise them. I'm I'm if they're watching the if they're watching the Facebook live. Um, I am putting up from time to time the instructions, which okay. include the Zoom that you can click on to enter. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't really think at this point we could do much about that. We could refer them to Facebook. We could refer them to the website. Okay. That's if they're watching awesome. Facebook Live, I, I have it every so often. I do that in the comments. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to participate. Well, that's what I'll do then. Thank you. You got it. Um, I do not see Mr. Uh, Sclera. Um, so I'm going to uh, skip the bit update it. unless Mr. Seidel, you have something you want to share. I have it. Am I unmuted? Yeah. Can yep. you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, now Mike asked me to give the report. He was unable to make it this evening. Uh, just give you a couple of highlights of what the bid has been working on. We uh, have a grant program. We're just rolling out now for businesses. Uh, we've extended our gift card program. I think it runs through the 15th of June. Working with the town on relaxing some zoning codes to allow outdoor dining. The Springfield Business Improvement Grant, which we just released uh, today, uh, Springfield uh, bid will be uh, supporting independently owned businesses. Uh, you can look at the flyer will be posted on the uh, Patriot.com website later. It'll be in the newspaper and the bid will send it out to the bid members. We're looking to uh, have businesses, retail businesses who own or rent space in a commercial building in town, retailers, restaurants, cafes, fitness, dance, music studios, salons, tutors, dry cleaners. Those type of businesses, we have some uh, applications as to who would qualify. There will be a committee that will review all the applications with the bid and qualify will be a grant of up to $1,500 to cover expenses that are required for you to reopen or continue to keep your business open uh, if you were forced to close or have to comply with various uh, regulations or things to cope with COVID-19. And we talk about marketing tools, payment platforms for accepting credit cards, shipping and delivery platforms, PPE expenses, equipment to ref refit stores, signage, et cetera. Uh, again, each grant would be up to 1500. Our application deadline will be June 30th. We want to get people to submit these grants quickly and we want to get the money out to them. And this is coming right directly from the bid. It's a simple form, uh, easy to fill out. You'll be able to look at it a little bit later on the Patriot website and in the newspaper that'll be out, I guess in about 10 days. Gift card program, you can purchase a $25 gift card for four off. So you can get a $25 gift card for $15. And that runs through uh, June 15th. Alan Deli, Amp Yoga, Antonio Italian Market, Backyard Heroes Fireworks, Camp Sub Shop, Cafe 22, Chen's 22, Chiaffi's, Cell Phone Repair, Hair Bar, uh, several pages of uh, stores that are participating. We will post that all on uh, patriot.com website. So you'll definitely want to see about getting involved in that. And that is the bid highlight. I think Mr. Basicolo talked about uh, the different development projects that are going on. And uh, that sums it up. Thank you, Scott. Is there any questions for Mr. Seidel? 
Mr. Samir, can I just add one thing to that? I forgot. Sure. Um, we had Wawa come in the other day and they're looking for their certificate of occupancy. They got a few more items to do, but they're getting very close. Then they got to do some training. So I think we're rounding the final bend there on, on Wawa. All right. Probably, that sounds great. I, I actually got an email for, um, for their grand opening. I can't, I don't remember the off the top of my head when that is it's next week sometime, but I did get a, I did get a uh, email. They are, they are doing their grand opening next week. So that's very, very exciting news. Looks great. Cool. Thank you very much. Seeing none, uh, let's go on to finance. Do I have a motion? I would like to make a motion to accept the total amount of payroll invoices from the period of May 27th through June 9th, 2020, in the amount of $4,769,899.42. I will second that. Excellent. Roll call, please. Mitty Mink Kaiser. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Men Huber. We. Oui. Mayor Capadis. Yes. And I, I just want to add this caveat. For some reason, my internet is freezing from time to time. It has done about three times so far this meeting. So if there's a delayed response or if I ask you to repeat repeat something, uh, please bear with me. Um, moving on to new businesses, we have one, two ordinances uh, for second reading and one for first. So, I, I Madam Clerk, can you read the ordinance by title? Yes. Ordinance 202013. This ordinance of the Township of Springfield County of Union, New Jersey, is approving application for long term tax exemption and authorizing execution of a financial agreement with Springfield 92 Milburn Avenue Urban Renewal. Mr. Mayor, uh, I make a motion to accept the 2013 ordinance as read by Madam Clerk, publication on local source June 18th to 2020. I will second. Okay, um, and we do have our professionals here, Mr. Jessup and Mr. Enright to, to help us out if there is any other questions. Uh, I want to open up this um, this ordinance for public comment. Is there any one from the public wishing to comment on this ordinance? Okay, seeing none, uh, I'm going to close the public comment portion. Is there any discussion up here? All right, we've, we've, I know we commented a lot the first time around. Um, so with that, uh, like a roll call, please. Committee Min Huber? Yes. Committee Min Kaiser? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber? Yes. Mayor Capadis? Yes. Okay. Ordinance 2014. This ordinance permits restaurants to utilize temporary outdoor dining areas in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. I make a motion to accept 2020-14 as read by Madam Clerk and publicized in a local source of June 18th, 2020. I will second. Okay, um, any comments, any public comments on this uh, ordinance 2020-14? Well, we have uh, one question, and I don't know who can who can answer this uh, um, uh, regarding the dining. Will the town allow closure of the streets for dining? I think that's a conversation for uh, Mr. Basicolo. Do you want to take that one? Well, Mr. Mayor, we're going to have to see case by case what you know which restaurant comes in where they're located. We'd have to check, obviously, with police, fire, EMS, et cetera. But I don't think sure. we can make a blanket statement one way or the other. It's going to be done individually. Okay, we didn't, we didn't touch base in that in a while, and I just wanted to know if there was any updates beyond that. Um, but that, that's how we're going to be guided, obviously. Um, just looking for um, any other comments. And again, 
the room outside for dining uh, and on Morris Avenue or roads adjacent to Morris Avenue. Again, um, this uh, ordinance was put together with the help of our bid uh, in conjunction with our health department, our fire department, our, our um, police department. Um, there are going to be strict caveats that all the businesses would have to uh, adhere to. Uh, we will be on hand to help them every step of the way in order to maintain that all of our residents are safe, uh, both driving and also dining out. Um, so again, it's also a case by case basis, as Mr. Busicolo alluded to. And, uh, you know, we have one thing about this town, we have great relationships with our businesses that we can certainly work all things out. Uh, and I've been getting some questions about things already, especially by the local businesses uh, in my neighborhood. So that's all going to be determined. Um, seeing no one else, I will ask, is there any other discussion up here? So it was mainly done to help the businesses get back on their feet and start, you know, start the ball rolling so people can go out to eat with their families and that. That's why we brought it. That's why the, the John brought it up to us, and it was a great idea. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Committeeman Kaiser. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Man Huber. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. And I also would like to thank our professionals for their help, uh, Mr. Jessup and Mr. Enright. Uh, thank you very much. So now I think we can return. We were going to, to pivot, but I think, uh, Mr. Kaiser, are you, uh, Committeeman Kaiser, are you ready to go or do you want us to do the resolutions first? How, how, how do you see that? How do you see that? We can go through the, the budget presentation. We take a few minutes. I'm going to, I guess, attempt to share my screen. Do you, do you want you want to do the resolutions while you take the time to figure that out, or you think you're good to go? I think I'm good to go. Hold on, just bear with me, I guess. All right, is everybody we can we can see the screen? Yes. All right. Yes. Um, so uh, as we've done in the past, we have to do our uh, public presentation and uh, before we adopt tonight. So of course, welcome everybody to the uh, Springfield Townships uh, virtual fiscal year 2020 budget adoption presentation. Uh, this year's budget adoption is certainly taking place under uh, unprecedented circumstances. Uh, we will, of course, make history. I think this is the first time that uh, a Springfield budget will be adopted virtually, but I, I think we are all in agreement that that wasn't necessarily the case. Uh, normally, our committee uh, would have already adopted our budget. Uh, however, due to the COVID-19 public health crisis, we were permitted uh, an extension by the state. Uh, to provide some background, uh, the budget committee this year, uh, which comprised of myself, as the chair and Deputy Mayor Weber began working on a, on a budget uh, right in the beginning of the new year, right after reorganization. Uh, we began laying out our priorities, mapping out our vision for the future and getting ready to work uh, to form a fiscally responsible but fair budget for our nearly 17,000 residents. Uh, under usual circumstances, under good economic times, a budget is still difficult to form. However, we were thrown a wrench uh, the likes of which we've never experienced before, and that of which we could not have predicted, uh, nor did we ask for. Uh, the coronavirus quickly forced us to re-examine every line item, uh, as well as our shared priorities. It has made us uh, uh, rethink and, and, and ultimately probably have to make some difficult decisions with this budget. Um, this budget, uh, anticipated to be adopted tonight, of course, is a culmination of the hard work from uh, Mr. John Bissacola, our business administrator, and Diane Cherry, our chief financial officer, along with every department head in our town. Uh, I want to thank them for their tireless work uh, throughout this budget process, which was kind of two budgets. Um, 
but also their work throughout this entire pandemic uh, uh, from our first responders to our administration, they have been remarkable throughout. Uh, before we get into the nitty gritty, nitty gritty I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't take an opportunity to address the difficult times we are currently facing as a nation, state, and town. We were certainly not immune from this crisis nor uh, the impending economic downturn. Uh, our state is the epicenter of this health crisis. More than 12,000 of our fellow residents have died. 1.1 million New Jerseyans are currently unemployed. In our town alone, we've had 22 that will no longer be with us as we chart the path to recovery. Uh, while those numbers have certainly slowed, they have not stopped. You know, we will continue to experience loss and heartache in the coming months ahead. Uh, we will continue to feel the effects of an economic recession for some time. Our hearts, thoughts, and prayers, of course, are with the families and the friends uh, of, of people who've lost somebody during this uh, public health crisis. Uh, uh, to provide uh, some insight, uh, our objectives this year were straightforward. Uh, we wanted to limit the tax increase for our average household, uh, continue to provide the most essential services necessary to our residents, uh, and try to leave our town in the best fiscal uh, standing possible. Uh, so, ever, so everyone has a better understanding who's watching tonight. Uh, our township collects taxes for multiple entities and uh, remits. And we do that on behalf of the school, local school board, and we do that on behalf of the county. Now, we don't necessarily have jurisdiction per se how they spend that money, but we do collect it. Uh, uh, all we have control over uh, is about 30%, a little over 30% of your budget. So out of every dollar you pay, we only get to use 30 cents of that dollar to provide you uh, the, the essential services, and, and that's fire, police, which of course we've seen them do remarkable things during this pandemic and need to make sure it's still provided. But it's also the public work, such as garbage collections. You know, the, these are essential services and necessities to our town, and, and we get to do that with only 30 cents of every dollar. Uh, uh, as I've alluded to before, you know, COVID-19 has certainly uh, changed our priorities for this year and has made us take a hard look at our budget situation. Uh, we've had additional expenses uh, to the tune of $60,000. Uh, th this was not planned, certainly is new to us as we, as we chart this pandemic. This consists of overtime for first responders, buying uh, a PP for our, uh, to protect not only our employees, but residents throughout the town. Uh, uh, we've, while this is this case, we've also faced decreased revenues. Uh, uh, so this is a kind of a perfect storm uh, hitting us. We, with the additional expenses not seen before and plus the decrease in revenue. Now, while we, our administration is looking to apply for grants and funding to offset our COVID expenses and revenue reductions, none of that money has been realized yet. So it cannot be reflected in this budget at this time. Now, we were, of course, hopeful uh, and anticipate funding in the future, but of course, it's no guarantee. So we cannot, in good faith, put that into our budget. Uh, this is just to show you uh, uh, the budget summary. Uh, once again, it's it's the largest budget in our town history at, at $34.4 million. A slight increase from last year. We've tried to keep it uh, 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 at what is best for our tax, for our town. Um, to go into our revenues, you know, this is a big thing. We... It, to make our budget work, you know, it's a it's a it's a collection of taxes, but also from revenues from other fees to make a balanced budget. And we're certainly seeing our revenues down, as I've said before. Uh, that includes fees such as licenses, but also the hotel taxes that we collect uh, uh, to court revenues, which haven't been there uh, uh, for the last few months. Uh, that's all down a tune to twenty percent. Um, uh, I, 
added to that, of course, are our uniform commercial code permits. That's our construction permits uh, have certainly slowed and, 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 and it's nearly 35%. Uh, not only is this the result of COVID, but also the slowing economy. So th this will probably be with us for some time. Uh, we are uh, officially in a recession. You know, I, I think everybody sees the news. Uh, uh, so it'll take some time for an economic recovery, but hopefully some of these revenues uh, uh, do increase as the year goes on as we continue to uh, open up, but they will certainly not be what they were uh, the previous years of what was anticipated. So I, I, I think everybody in our in our 34.4 million dollar budget, you know, everybody's wondering where that 30 percent is spent and and a lot of it is in fixed costs. Uh, that we don't necessarily have uh, control over, you know, that's statutorily obligated or contractually obligated, things such as pension payments and health benefits, uh, for instance. Uh, uh, pension accounts for about 9% of the budget. Uh, uh, health care expenses for our employees account for about 14%. So th those are fixed costs that we can't get around. Uh, the largest, and if you were with us last year, there's three large departments that take up uh, uh, most of the money, and, and for good reason. That's your public safety of both your police and fire, which is about uh, a little over 27% uh, of the budget. And then, of course, our DPW, uh, uh, which is just under 9%. Uh, it's about one third of your budget is in those things, but those are the, 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 the services that are necessity or that you interact with on a daily basis. So, uh, uh, they're important and we need to continue to make sure that we uh, uh, fund them. Now, I think a lot of it goes into that 30, right? A, a lot of it's fixed costs, but there's other expenses, other expenses that we probably consider uh, that we have discretion over. But when you really look at it, you don't have that much discretion. Discretionary would be garbage collection, but I don't see our town being able to cut that out. So in reality, while we may consider that a, a other expense or part of that operating budget that we could potentially cut, it's not necessarily the case. Uh, same with utilities. We can't stop paying the electric bill. We can't stop paying our, our, our heat for our buildings or we can't stop having an attorney for the town or other professional services. So those are essentially fixed, but those costs continue to rise each year. So we have to meet those obligations plus our fixed obligations, which also uh, 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 increase every year. Now, of course, this is where no one likes it. In, in a good year, we weren't necessarily, when we started, when Chris and I started uh, working on the budget, we weren't anticipating making these cuts. Uh, but unfortunately, they became a reality once COVID hit and the economic downturn started. Uh, and, and these cuts to get us to this budget, of course, are just a, a, a little bit. You know, we limited department budgets. Most stayed at 0%. Uh, they stayed steady. No one rare, rarely got an increase in their operating expenses. Uh, we did have to reduce the library. That's not what this, uh, what this committee has done in the past. Last year was the first time that we increased library funding, and for good reason. We thought it was a, a, a service that that, uh, uh, that required that additional funding. However, now it's, it looks that that's one area where we can potentially uh, cut. Uh, and we also took a look in making sure that we're, we're going to slow the amount of money we invest in our capital expenditures. Not something that we wanna do, but we'll put in uh, the bare necessity to make sure that we uh, continue to uh, operate. And, I, and lastly, the tax impact, you know, it, it, on average, it's an increase for average household income is gonna be about $107 uh, uh, per household. Uh, an increase over last year, but this is the reality uh, uh, of what we face, uh, uh, making sure that we meet our obligations. It's not something that we wanna do, but it's something that this budget has called for. I don't think, once again, we, on the outs, outset of this wanted to do that, but 107. And for what we get out of that 30% is probably pretty manageable. So 
in closing, I just want to say, you know, Mr. Mayor and uh, uh, fellow members of the committee, you know, this this budget, it meets our obligations. I, I don't think this is anywhere where we envisioned when we reorganized earlier this year. You know, absolutely not. Is, is it perfect? Probably not. But it does meet our obligation and it gets the job done. You know, over the next coming months and years, we probably do have some really hard decisions as a committee to make. Uh, and this is the first one. But with that being said, I, I think we could be in worse shape. So I plan on voting yes and adopting this budget tonight. I urge all of you to also vote in favor of it. And let's continue to work together. We're all in this together and, and we'll get through this difficult time. Thank you, Commissioner Kaiser. Um, before I have my comments to start off, I just want to open up the, the public hearing formally. Uh, so can I have a, a motion to open, please? Motion to open. And I will second. All in favor, voice vote. Aye. Aye. Um, I'm going to start off the comments uh, by just saying, you know, Alex and Chris, I, I know this was, I mean, we, we hear these words all the time, Herculean and, and, and gargantuan and, 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 and massive task, but it really was. I mean, there's no other words that you can use to describe um, um, this process this year for, uh, for the two of you, along with our professional staff, to put a budget together like this in these times, in these conditions. You know, saying that you needed to make tough decisions was an understatement. Um, roughly, and, and this is off at the top of my head, and Alex and Chris, you may have uh, better numbers than I did. I, I seem to remember last year the increase was maybe around $87 per household. And, you were, and now we're, Mayor, not to cut you off, uh, uh, it was only $69. Okay. Well, I mean, from go to 69 to 107 you know, it, it, it could have been a lot worse and it, it, it easily could have been a lot worse. And, and I appreciate your effort uh, being on the budget committee before. I, I know what it's like. I know the long hours. I know the conversation that you had. I know the tough decisions that you had made. Um, but I am proud to, um, you know, also um, going to cast my vote yes for this, for this budget because uh, it, it is it's very prudent. It's uh, it's a it's a budget that um, I think was uh, very hard to put together, and I truly believe you made some tough choices. And I applaud and thank, uh, you know, our business office, uh, Mr. Basicolo, Ms. Sherry, uh, all of our department heads uh, for for answering the tough questions, making the tough decisions, and, uh, and and coming up with a budget that 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 continues the level of service that our residents have come to deserve and, and want, and that's appreciative. Um, anyone else have any comments yes. up here? Yes, uh, I just want to add a few things. So, as Alex mentioned, uh, you know, roughly a little over a hundred dollars we increased it by the year. You know, <laughs> just to dummy it down a little bit, and, and I hate to do that, but if you break it down and you break it down to about nine. Average household less than nine dollars, somewhere in the area of nine dollars a month, less than two dollars a week, um, keeps everything intact, keeps all of your services intact, uh, keeps your employees happy, keeps the you know you're faced with everything from from rising costs of materials, um, rising costs of labor, rising costs across the boards on, on just everything. The only thing that seems to have gone down a little bit is gasoline recently, but even that, you know, you're still paying for. Um, so somewhere in the area of under $2 is what it breaks down to. And, and, you know, and we're already looking at ways in the future at this point right now to kind of cut back on certain things. We have things in the works right now with public safety, with, with both chiefs, um, of police and fire in terms of uh, what we hope is gonna be some significant savings in the long run on certain things. So so we're working at it. it. Unfortunately, we just got dealt a bad hand on some certain stuff, but it's really not that bad. Uh, you know, if you look at it, your services at your house will not be interrupted and everything will 
be the same or improve with time. So uh, I'm actually pretty happy with it uh, that there was a uh, no employee impact and and there's really no residential impact on it. Anyone else uh, have any comments up here? Okay, um, seeing none, I would like to have a motion to close. I make a motion to close. I was uh, second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Aye. All right. Um, and we have a resolution 2021-71. Why don't we do this on its own? Madam Clerk, can you read the resolution? You're on mute, Ms. Donnelly. There you go. Resolution 2021-71. This resolution adopts the 2020 current budget for the Township of Springfield. I would like to make a motion to adopt resolution 2020-171 as read by Madam Clerk. And I will second 2020-171. Roll call, please. Lehman Kaiser. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber? Yes. Woman Du Bois? Yes. Mayman Huber? Yes. Mayor Cavendish? Yes. yes. If we're, it's a nice question, if we're allowed, are we going to try and present it to the public like during the day, like they did the last couple of years? I don't know if we're allowed to. I have no idea what the regulations are. Yeah, we, we, we did not do that this year. Uh, uh, Unlike times, it was, it was just a little more difficult to uh, uh, try to get everybody together by Zoom and, and record. So we chose not to do it that this time. Mm -hmm. this year. We adopted it. Uh, but the document was up for probably oh, okay. a month, and it was online that anyone could view. And I know multiple people had because they reached out with questions. All right, I'm going to move on to resolutions uh, by consent agenda. If you want me to pull any, uh, please let me know. Uh, 2020 172, 2020 173, 2020 174, 2020 175. We did, did we do 176? No, we did not. 2020 176. 2020 2020 and 2020 Okay, I would like to make a motion to adopt the following resolutions by consent uh, uh, agenda. Uh, resolution 2020-170 through 172 through resolution 2020-180. I second. Roll call, please. Mayman Kaiser. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Huber. Yes. Deputy Mayor Weber. Yes. Mayor Capitis. Yes. Moving on to correspondence, Cranford Ordinance 2020-09, amend code part three of land de development to delegate certain planning board duties to code review committee. I ask that that be received and filed. Uh, and at this time, I'm going to open up the meeting to public comment on any governmental issue. Uh, again, you're going to be limited to three minutes. And also just a reminder, um, for those who joined late, um, we understand that some of you might be here for the pool uh, in regards to the governor's uh, latest executive order. Just a reminder that the township committee has not discussed yet uh, what that means and what the implications are for our uh, pools and summer programs. Uh, recreation is an agenda item on our executive session this evening. Um, so our role uh, for in terms of public comment for pools is to listen, uh, to understand, to acknowledge your concerns. Uh, so we could take that in as we um, 
move into executive session uh, after the public comment portion. So let's go to um, uh, let's go to Barbara. Barbara, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Barbara Rappaport, 50 Country Club Lane. And I have a number of questions here. Um, I just want to know about the pool. I guess at this point, you don't know if needed, uh, if there would be additional staff required and what in fact would it do to the uh, membership fee also, um, my concern is with the uh, bathrooms. I know that the cleaning staff does their best under normal circumstances, but as far as the ladies' room is concerned, you know, with the showers and everything, it, it, it's always very wet and the toilets are always wet and, you know, I, I'd like to see that addressed. And quite frankly, my feeling would be that showers should be out of the question other than what you use outside, you know, to uh, wash off any uh, kind of dirt or anything, you know, before you go into the pool. Thank you, Ms. Rappaport, for your your comments, and, and we'll certainly take them into uh, take them into advisement as we go into our discussions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to go to Mr. Rubin. Mr. Rubin, if you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Give me one moment to find him in the list. Sure. Mr. Rubin, you should be good. You just need to unmute your mic. Okay, you guys hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Is it, hello? Yeah, we're good. Hey, Chad uh, Rubin. Can you give an address for, for us, please? Chad Rubin, 47 Skylark Road. Um, you know what? I, after I type my questions, what there might have been another meeting where I read through the budget online. Was there another meeting where it was discussed, just a budget meeting that was open, or was this the meeting to do that? This no, as it was alluded to before, we were granted an extension, and with this time, uh, this was this was the uh, this was the opportunity for our presentation. Okay, okay, I, okay. So I, I thought there was a meeting before it got voted on. Um, so yeah, you know, I guess my questions are. A little in vain, but uh, I, I guess one, the, the one I had on average household, it said $170 per average household. Was that the average taxes per household are going to go up $107? This was, this was, uh, and again, uh, Alex or Chris, you could jump in here, but I, just uh, to answer in short, um, those, those were just the, the township side. No, no, okay, okay. No, no, I know, but I was just wondering what what is that the average household will go up 107 for the township or is that average household on your assessed value? On your assessed value, okay. So what I guess to make it easy, what's the range of of increase for for the town per household? Uh may, maybe uh the the CFO might have a better understanding of the range but uh, uh i i didn't really set out a range um i based uh, the 107 on the average assessed value of 160,000. okay okay that's helpful and then i guess that the, the one other question i had when i was reading through the budget you know, there seemed to be a lot of salary increases so um i was wondering how many of those are contracted salary increases versus i guess merit-based or negotiated and then thinking in a year like this, where you know certainly the town revenues now are down, certainly citizens' revenues are down, uh, you know, and some have even lost jobs and are out of work completely. Yeah, you know, I would, I would, I would want, I would wonder what the reasoning was behind giving people merit and uh, negotiated increases, understanding that contracted increases have to be paid. 
but well, maybe they're all contracted. And I, majority. I, I was, oh, sorry. Yeah, Diane, you're 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 better qualified than I. The majority of those are all um, union contracts. Okay. There are maybe ten um, department heads and um, confidential employees who are not under contract. That as of now they are budgeted for the minimal two percent increase. Yeah, but uh, uh, they have not been awarded yet. They've just been budgeted. Correct. Okay, that would need a separate resolution passed by the township, and uh, that will require once again another hearing and public comment and discussion by all. But we put that in the budget uh, because when we did originally set out, you know, we we thought we were going to have the money, but that will of course be relooked at as the town as the as the year goes on okay great yeah no i mean uh, yeah i understand uh certainly a lot of things have changed so that, that's the only reason i asked and, and i i know it's a tough question to ask and and everybody deserves pay increases especially you know even to keep up with inflation but uh like you said everything's changed so yeah no 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 uh, uh i i think i i think i speak for everyone up here we certainly understand that and we'll, you know that that will be a uh if we decide to go in that direction you know i i think some stuff would have to change and and require further deliberation yeah all right great and then i had one i had one other that was unfortunately that was that was three minutes unfortunately i'm, I'm sorry oh, for that. it was already answered so thank you everybody Thank you. Um, let's go to Mr. Sayuda. Name and address again for the record. Once a poo, unmute you, please. Dominic Sayuda, 97 Colfax Road. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, two questions. Um, the, the library reductions, did that include staff? And also the $107 tax increase, does that include the appraisal, the, 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 the new appraisal that's being done around town? Uh, if there's any increases with that, was that baked into the $107 calculation? I'll take that one. No, sure. the appraisal did not um, have any effect on this uh, tax increase. Um, any appraisals will, at best will not be until the following year. And mm -hmm. we only submit uh, money over to the library. It's their um, board that would decide staffing levels. And, and and just to uh, uh, elaborate a little bit more on that, uh, you know, yeah, like Ms. Sherry said, you know, please direct that question to the, the to the library board on what they'll do with their finances this year. But I do know and I can say that the administration for early on when we anticipated that there would be need for cuts, we were in discussion uh, with the library leadership. Thank you. Can I add to that, uh, Alex, in regards to the questions with the library? Um, we've also made, we've reached out to the library and helped them in some instances yeah. with certain things that, some services that they use to help them kind of streamline spending. So while yes, there are cuts, we've also helped them, made suggestions that they've taken to do certain things. We, we can't mandate things, but we're, we're always on the lookout to try to help where, where we can to provide them with ideas to help with, with financial things like that. Yes, I could, I could attest to that. Thank you. I, I could attest to that too, just for, just for, you know, I've been to every meeting except the last one they had here, which was really quick. Um, but yes, they have, they have been making some very tough choices as well um, in terms of with their staff. And, and again, as, as committeeman, Committee woman Du Bois uh, alluded to their their services and and we kind of help them out where we can in certain aspects, but we try to you know have them have their own uh, budget and their own entities to 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 go on and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we have Jerry. Hello, how are you, uh, Alex? I want to tip my hat i can't imagine as someone who was chairman of the budget of the finance two times i mean i'm sure this one was really tough and it seems like you did a great job so um kudos to you and um and chris um question you mentioned the decrease in revenue on court fees and hotels and also on the permits you know with the permits with some of the projects that we have the sacks project and a few down there 
you might be able to recoup some of that for next year. What was, I know you gave a percentage, what was the dollar amount of difference in, in the hotel tax and court fees so far? Uh, I don't have the, the, the numbers off the top of my head uh, right in front of me, but I, uh, Ms. Sherry might be able to, uh, I, I know we were going back and forth for a while on this, so Ms. Sherry may have those answers or at the very least can get them to you. Give me a quick second. I'll just flip over to my document here. Uh, basically, that represents the amount of UCC figures um, revenue that we actually realized last year. No, with, I mean the um, the hotel and court fees. Uh, the hotel and court fees. That's an example of all of them. There's also parking fees went down to almost nothing for two right. two right. months. Um, there's basically a small percentage decrease in almost every revenue we are collecting, uh, uh, except for you know a couple of licenses. So we anticipate we try to anticipate on the lower side, so we um, are not forced with the deficit later on. Okay. The um the amount you got from the state was the same that they promised you, right? I imagine that is correct. They I imagine not alter it yet. I imagine so the concern is going to be next year since the state isn't obviously collecting sales tax and everything that they're not getting with businesses closed and so on. I mean that that could be what was the number? I guess my question is, what was the number that you did receive from the state? And obviously you can't anticipate, I guess, that amount next year. And are you, what are In you looking at? For, I, next um, for the 2021 budget, we're, we, we're waiting for more guidance from the state. As of now for 2020, we are um, guaranteed what we received, the same amount we received last year, which as I'm flipping through the budget real fast. Um, it's, uh, here it is, ERT. It's 1.7 million uh, and change. 1.7 million? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, I mean, and they didn't give you any indication of, you know, you may not be getting, or you might be getting half of that or, 75% or anything for next year. I guess that's where it's really going to be tough next year. Whoever's yes, doing 2021 that. 2021 budget presentation will probably not be a fun one. Yeah. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, and so just Rich asked the question about presentations. This is it, though, right? This is passed. The budget's passed. This is it. There's nothing that, else, right? I got a little confused. Is, that, when he, um, that is correct. Okay. Yes. So, okay. Just wanted to make sure. Um, I, honestly, I, I wish you had one or two before, but okay. I know it was up there. I know these circumstances are different than any other. So again, Alex, great job. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Fernandez. Uh, I would like to move on to Scott. When you're again unmuted, please mute your, uh, please state your name and address for the record. Scott Horowitz, 74Q Drive. I just would like to thank you, uh, Mayor Capiti, uh, Deputy Mayor Weber, uh, and Committee uh, Woman Du Bois for last night's event. I think it was excellent done. It was very meaningful. It was a great, peaceful event, and it really showed the town stands behind all its residents and really helped the entire community heal together. And just like that. And just on a side note, I just would love to. Completely unrelated. I think Linda Donnelly's office is awesome with all the Yankee background. Just wanted to say that. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you, Scott. And, um, you know, I, I cannot take any credit uh, for anything that happened last night. I was just honored and uh, thrilled that I was invited. Yeah, we were glad you were there. Me too. <laughs> yes. I was there. there. Alex was there. Oh. Mr. Yes. Mm -hmm. can I just make one comment? Absolutely. I have a Mickey Mantle plaque in my office. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> I got a signed ball of his down there, as Mr. Vesicolo. Oh, you got Let's go, Mets. Got yeah. Wait, I just want to comment. Committeeman Huber <laughs> would have been there, but in light of what's going on with COVID, I know not everybody could be there. It is still, people want to stay separated. So Committeeman Huber sent his support, and that's the only reason he wasn't there last night. So. And, and also, and, and also too, I'd also like to thank Senator Kane for showing up and his yeah. support. It was 
it was nice to have him there too as well. And I know that there was some people that marched from union to our event, like Erica led last week mm. to, to, to union. So we also appreciate the, the love back and forth. Um, see, seeing no more comments, I, I do want to make a, a clarification and it alludes to what uh, committeeman Huber uh, reminded me of, we do in fact do the garage sale uh, before bulk. Um, so that means if bulk is June 17th, uh, we're going to do their garage sale the 13th. So we will definitely have our, um, our signage up, our advertisements up, because again, I know a lot of people have been doing spring cleaning early and uh, they want to get their stuff out on the, on the driveway to uh, do the garage sale. So we are in fact going to do it this Saturday, June 13th. And, and we'll certainly um, go across all of our social media avenues and our website and our television channel um, uh, there. Also, too, I didn't want to pull. Yes, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. When you're before you're, you, you, you go on to something. I, I just want to finish up with the budget thing. Sure. I, and just a last note. I, I didn't. You know, I know we had a lot of lengthy budget. Um, a lengthy budget presentation, but a good one, and I appreciate the support. I did want to mention too, uh, you know, obviously with COVID and everything is slowing down a little bit, and it's not certainly not business as normal and as usual. Uh, but included in our resolutions tonight was a, a, a very big donation, and we're grateful uh, for uh, Union TV 34 from Union. They donated a whole bunch of stuff uh, to us. They they uh, donated some additional cameras and a switcher to us. Uh, as we look to improve our uh, television and broadcasting capabilities, um, that was there. That was an option, and we certainly appreciate um, their donation and uh, look, look for things to come with that for sure. Go ahead, Chris. What were we going to say? You know, uh, just to address a few things that were said um, earlier um, through questions. You know. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's, there's some tough things and there's some tough decisions that have to be made. But, but I will say this, you know, most of our, I think it was said that most of our people are contracted in and, and they get their raises and there was about 10 people that it doesn't affect. And I, I have to tell you something. I have no problem going on the record right now and stating that as far as it, it comes to my department heads, all of our department heads and everything else, you know, these people are accessible. With, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there are times that, you know, Robbie Betcher's out clearing, you know, blockages on a Sunday at four o'clock in the afternoon. There are times that I am calling John Basicolo on a Saturday night at eight o'clock at night, you know, because, um, you, you know, I need an answer to something right away. And he's there to pick up the phone or, or he's there for me, you know, or, or the chief of police or, or the fire, you know, or Adam, a Adam, Adam gets tortured with his phone. His phone rings nonstop. So in, in that sense, sure. You know, um, there are some tough things, but, but these are people that, you know, have worked hard through everything to keep this ship going straight. And I, I don't want that to be overshadowed you know, by something else. These are people that work hard and they deserve everything that they get from them. So um, just want to let that be known. That's my stance on that one. Thank you, Chris. Does anybody else have anything they want to share? And again, I can hear things, but things on my end are frozen right now. So um, Eric is still waving when we gave her a shout out. That's what I see on my screen right now. It's oh, wow. That was a while Thanks. ago. Yeah. Does anybody? Oh, now, now I see you live. Does anyone else have anything to say? I can get audio, but the video is a little slow. Okay. I don't think anybody's talking. Uh, seeing that, um, I'm going to close the public portion because I don't see anybody else. Um, so what, uh, we do have a motion tonight for an executive session. So Madam Clerk, if you would please, uh, read the resolution. Resolution 6920, whereas Article 6 of the Open Public Meetings Act provides that a public body may hold a closed session, and whereas the Township Committee will during this meeting enter into discussion of the following matters, 
and I don't have an update. Attorney, thank you. Attorney client privilege and personnel, police and recreation, attorney client privilege and contract negotiations are carry Iovino. Whereas the matters to be discussed in closed session are remain in the strictest of confidence by all township committee members and furtherance of their fiduciary duties to the township. Now, therefore, be it resolved, matters discussed at this meeting will be released to the public when the reasons for discussing and acting upon them in closed session no longer exist. Make a motion. I'd make a motion to go into closed executive session. Second. Second. All in favor? Just low, Chris. Uh, Aye. Uh, Thank hi. you, everybody. Are we taking action afterwards? No, we are not. Let me, hey, I don't have a number. Can somebody text me the number to go to? Sure. I will do that, Rich. No problem. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you look good frozen, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I got right. it. Thank you. Have a good Bye. Day. Thank you. Bye. Emails. Yeah, it's Zoom, but I can't find it now. Here, you want to put it
Yeah. Okay. We have uh, two committee members. We have, I think the administrator is almost on. I don't know if I want to go to sleep or if I want to like eat a pizza right now. I'm not sure what I want to do, but it has to be something like that. Yeah. We're in we're in the public session here. Oh, excellent. There may be many others that share your uh, your appetite. Yep, this is the three hours we're on this right now. I am starving. So we just need one more um, council member and the clerk. Yeah. We have three. We have we have a quorum, but we don't have Linda. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to make sure I'm, I hear as well. Can you can I give you calls? Okay, you? Linda's trying to get and she wants to tell me she wants me to tell her who adjourns. So we have a majority right now. So can we oh no, we have Alex. We lost Chris. No, I'm here. So we, have, we have Chris and we have oh we lost oh. Alex. We lost Alex. I'm sure he'll come back. It's, but yeah, we need a, we need uh be good to have one more so that we can so that we can uh, close correctly. Hold on, I'm gonna get Linda on the phone. Okay. Hi, you're we're live. You're on. Um, I have myself. I have Mr. Weber. I have Mr. Dad, and I have okay. Mr. Basicolo. We're waiting for one Thank more you. member. Alex was on, but I don't know what happened. Well, I'm hitting quick here. He said, he, said his he said his internet just went out. Oh, great. I'm yeah, I've been having issues with my internet all night. Okay, I'm going to put you on speakerphone so you can participate. That's okay. I'm going to put you on speakerphone and you can participate. Hey, Mayor, I have. I have committee man uh, Kaiser available uh, by okay. conference call. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Uh, uh, committee man Kaiser, uh, seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. Have a great night. Bye bye. Thank you. Nice job. Okay. Are you drinking? I don't know. First, I'm supposed to go.